I'm starting a course on Sri Isha Upanishad, which is one of the publications of His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, of whom we are aspiring members serving his transcendental mission and the mission of our beloved Gurudev Bhaktivandav Sri Srimad Paramara Dutam Astotar Zata Sri Srimad Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj Sri Gurudev So this is the Bhaktivandav Lions University Why? Blue Right, we are trying to serve Sri Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the complexion of a fresh rain cloud, bluish complexion, Shambarna. It's a very interesting point to start because this first invocation verse that we're going to be studying is about how God is always complete. So can you say God is blue? Yes, he is blue. But he appears in many forms. Sometimes he appears in a reddish complexion, sometimes golden, sometimes sveta or whitish complexion. He appears in many different species. Actually, God is everywhere. And he is not outside, he is within. So one of our great incarnations of the Lord that we meditate upon and daily remember is our Lord Narasimha and he is an incarnation of the, the ferocity of love for his devotees meaning there's different kinds of Narasimha Ugra Narasimha means wherever he sees any kind of malicious intent towards devotees, his own very dear ones, he appears and protects them. So therefore, devotees are never afraid of Narasimha because they know he is our protector. And one of the secrets of Narasimha is that he is <clears throat> not just in the spirit of the Lord, Master, Purush, Controller, the Supreme God, but also he has the Shakti mood of that feminine aspect of God, known as Shakti, Swarup Shakti, which is very protective. They say, what is compassion? Compassion means passion to protect those you love. Right? Or to see those you love suffering, you want to help them. Like a mother bear, if you attack its cubs, it has so much compassion for its cubs <laughs> that it will attack the aggressor. This is our meditation. And in our line, our teachers, especially in our recent line, many of them were known as lions. Our Srila Gurudev Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj Bhaktivedanta Srila Gurudev he himself said, I am the son of a lion and I don't want you, my children, to be kittens and mice. Also become like lions. But it's important principle to know that what are the qualities of lions that we're trying to embody? The aspect of their love especially for those who are suffering. Meaning non-aggression, but to help. The nature of a sadhu or a teacher, especially a saintly teacher, which is known in Sanskrit as a sadhu or a devotee of God, is that sometimes by their words, they may be sharp, but there's only to heal or to remove our anartas. Anarta is a word in Sanskrit that means something that doesn't have value. So you can think of it like a parasite on your psychic framework or a virus that has infected you. And so sadhus or saintly teachers, it's said, Santa Ivaisa Chindanti. 
by their words, they cut the attachments of the mind to false illusory reality and they free you. Manavyasa muktivi, they give you liberation. That's why sometimes it's seen that the teachers or gurus are somewhat strong. But this is only because of their nature as being paraduka dukhi. They see others suffering and want to help them. And so sometimes to help it requires a certain force. This is the story of Narasinga. One of his associates, Jai and Vijay, two of his associates, they had left his spiritual realm known as Vaikuntha, which is the place free of anxiety. They were gatekeepers, but they had been cursed for the sake of the Lord's pastimes, which means to glorify him, to please him. And they had become covered over. Their consciousness was covered over by a temporary acquired nature. The desire to exploit and to control others. And therefore, Shimati Radhika, or the feminine counterpart of the Lord Sri Krishna, the second half of the absolute truth. We worship the supreme personalities of Godhead, Sri Radha and Sri Krishna. She also sent one of her, you could say, particles of love, of grace, of mercy, Sri Prahlad. Within all these associates and personalities, there's different <clears throat> parts, different personalities, but the devotee is always infused with the potency of Ladini Shakti, Shimadi Radhika Swarup Shakti. That means Sri Radha is the that aspect of Godhead in its form of love, compassion, kindness. We pray to her, Karunam Kurumai Karuna Barite. She is full of Karuna, mercy, mercy, mercy. The ocean of mercy, the waves of mercy, the depth of mercy, the breadth of mercy, the height of mercy. That is all Srimati Radhika. So the devotee is someone who has her love, like a particle of her love. You can think of it like fusion power, something very small but very powerful. Something like, how can you describe it or find it? What is that element that makes the devotees very powerful, very courageous? That little particle of that power of that divine love that is Srimati Radhika herself. Murti of that. That means the very embodiment of that love that is in the devotee. And so then they spread that love when they're sent by her will to help others. So when these personalities were going against the natural flow of their love, then some extra force is required to turn them back towards their natural state of being, which is to love God and to have relationship with God. So ourselves in our philosophy, we don't believe in demons or bad guys. We believe in the soul, God and love. However, evil exists. Pain and violence exists in the duality of material universes. Where does it come from? It comes once we turn away, turn away from that love for God. Turn away from God. And then we try to be God and exploit others and enjoy and control this world. Then these tendencies come within us. But the soul is pure. This is one of the essential teachings of Sri Prahlad. Atma Nitya Shuddha. The soul is eternal and pure. So how can we realize that pure soul and exist in that pure soul state of consciousness? Therefore, we have our course of study. So Nara Singha Dev removed the anartas or the viruses, the parasites within the consciousness of this Hiranyakashipu and liberated him and brought him forward to the next chapter of his spiritual evolution. This is called a lila pastime for our less, ourselves as a lesson. But how can we overcome our own impediments, or obstacles in the path to love from God? That's why the origin of this 
idea of being lion-like is coming from Srimati Radhika herself, where she describes love to be like a lion that destroys all obstacles in the path to love. Even obstacles caused by the beloved, by the planetary influences, by, you could say, fate or karma. Real love has no obstacle that it cannot conquer. That's real love. This is as described by all of our saintly authorities. Our Srila Rupa Goswami, who's described to be our Adikavi, original poet or teacher sage in our line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, coming in the Brahma Sampradaya. He describes love like that. Sarvata Dvangsa Rahitam. It has no obstacle. Anything that comes that appears to be an obstacle, love devours. That bond which cannot be broken by any obstacle, that is love. So therefore we meditate on that aspect because here we are as conditioned souls and we have developed this acquired nature. So how do we realize our true nature? We need that power to come into our lives and to remove all that virus, the parasites, all these things that have lodged onto our consciousness. And we think we are that now. All these obstacles have to be removed for true love to manifest. So therefore we meditate on our lion-like acharyas, our Srila Gurudev, our dear Vaishnavas, and our Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Our Param Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Prigyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj was known. His, our my Gurudev wrote a biography of him called Acharya Keshari Kajivani. In Hindi it means the life of the lion-like preceptor. Acharya Keshari Jivani, which means Acharya is a preceptor who practices what they preach and teaches about God and helps the souls achieve the state of love for God. But he was like a lion. And when you hear of his activities, it blows your mind out. That's possible? For us to speak about them and think of imitating would be itself madness. Oh, we shall do it like him. What kind of madness are you possessing? So, his guru is known as Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Prabhupada. And he was himself this glorious, unparalleled personality who was himself known as the Lion Guru, Acharya Singha. And to our Padam Gurudev, his Pranam Mantra, which means when we pray to him and invoke his presence, we bring, pray, Namo Vishnu Padaya Acharya Singha Rupine. I'm praying to you who are in the form of a lion-like Acharya. Why? By that power of your love, you can remove all of those obstacles in my life, keeping me away from God and love for God. Therefore, power is necessary. So our mood here is, whatever strength we possess is not to harm. It's only to help, to heal, and to serve. We observe the Hippocratic Oath. What is that? That's what the doctors have to take this vow when you become a doctor, you take the Hippocratic Oath. That means I solemnly swear to never harm, to only endeavor to heal. But a doctor to heal, sometimes they need a scalpel. Sometimes they need a, a knife, sharp knife, not a blunt weapon, sharp incision. Heart surgery, brain surgery. My Gurudev, our Gurudev would say, I am like a brain surgeon and a heart surgeon. That means you need very fine tools. So we are meditating upon them and praying for their blessing and their grace and their shelter. That with that powerful love, courageous love, we can help heal the world of its pain and trauma and sorrow. Ultimately help them overcome all these problems by transcending them and going beyond into transcendental life 
and then themselves being a beacon of light and hope to the world. So that is our meditation here. Our Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur is known as the seventh Goswami. Our Bhaktisiddhanta Prabhupada's Guru, Srila Gorkshara Babaji Maharaj himself, when you hear about his life, it, when you meet someone like that, you can do nothing but offer your heart and bow before them as if they are a messenger of God himself. A personality who is living example of selfless love. That's Acharya. Living example of simply using every part and parcel of their energy in service to others, but not for the sake of pleasing others because of their love for God. Sri Krishna, my personal teacher who I served for 16 years, he tells a story about Akadashi, which is a very special day for Vaishnavas or worshippers of Sri Krishna and Sri Radha when we fast. And he said that once there was a sage who was performing meditation on God and he realized God and God gave him darshan. That means he saw God in this body. He had a vision. Oh Lord, I love you. Let me be with you. Bring me to you. He said, no, I'm telling you to help others. Don't be selfish. No, no, no. I've seen you. I want to be with you. I want to go to you. He said, if you want to be with me, live out the rest of your life in service to others. Then upon completing the, your designated duties in this life, you will come be with me forever. And if you surrender fully to me, as I so choose and desire, you will help me. Bring back those who are lost. Right? I remember for our Guru, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, he liked uh, music because music is a way of expressing your heart and love for something greater. Even if it's your loved one, your, the principle is, of love itself is what you're almost singing to and worshiping. So we sang to him this beautiful song. I remember a few different times it would be sung for him. Amazing grace, right? Amazing grace. What is that grace itself? Because we say, is that God himself? God is the most graceful. But what, is that, what does it say to be graceful? To be, to be graceful means to be almost like feminine, right? Shakti means that feminine aspect of God, the compassionate, loving, graceful aspect. So we say His divine grace. For our gurus, we say His divine grace. Who? Krishna's divine grace. Krishna's Radha. That is the divine grace. When we talk about Krishna consciousness, we should think, who is Krishna conscious? Krishna consciousness means Srimati Radhika's consciousness. It's her property. We are not Krishna conscious. She is Krishna conscious. We are trying to serve her and become Krishna conscious like her. So when we say His divine grace. So that amazing grace, what is that grace? Our Sri Guru, who is himself a messenger expansion of the love of Sri Radha and bringing lost souls to their eternal home, Krishna's land of Vrindavan. And then understanding that Vrindavan can be ever wherever you are, everywhere. Why? We have to embody that spirit of Krishna consciousness, which is the spirit of Srimati Radhika. When Krishna left Vrindavan and she met him after many, many years, hundred years later. Sometime before that also, she met, this is the story, long story, in a place called Kurukshetra, where a battle was going to take place between family, sides of the family. Let's fight for power and control. And she met him there and she said, come back to Vrindavan. Come back to Vrindavan. Oh, I'm so busy. I have to do this and I have to do that. We have so many duties in life that we take up. But our real duty, our only duty is duty without love and relationship is only fruit of activity that causes pain and suffering, karma. The result of karma is pain. The fruit of karma is separation from God. The fruit of love is relationship with God. So seva is the fruit of love. And the fruit of that seva is relationships and bandha. And the fruit of karma is just pain 
right? You see very wealthy people, but they're suffering. They've gone away from love or against love because of ambition. So ambition takes you away from God and the ambition to love and be related to God, that is bhakti yoga. We have to develop that ambition, that greed. How can I be related to God? Sri Radha and Sri Krishna. Therefore, we pray to his divine grace. So our Gurudev, we pray to him, amazing grace. That grace, which is the messenger of Srimati Radhika, who is our Srila Gurudev. So our Acharyas, they always point to Krishna, God. Why? Because they're all in the mood of Sri Radha, who is thinking of nothing but Krishna 24 hours a day. How can I please him? How can I be with him? How can I serve him? So that is Krishna consciousness. So that is our line. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. The sweetness of that grace is that aspect of Srimati Radhika. Otherwise, God alone, Krishna, is described to be nirvikar, nirvishesh, nirgun brahm, brahma. Impersonal. Because you're removing the personality of it. God is love, love is God. So therefore, God is not alone. Our Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was famous as the lying guru, actually for us, the most famous is lying guru, the source of this present Tradition, you could say. Why? Because the tradition is always carrying down from one powerful teacher to another. And there's links in the chain between, but when this personality comes from whom it spreads out and with great force, then they become like a new special figure within that line. So we're in the Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sarasvat Parampara Sampradaya line. And Sarasvat is for Sarasvati the name of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, who's called the Charya Singha, a lion-like guru. And he himself described his position as maidservant of Srimati Radhika. We know his name. This is not so much for public, but all of his true disciples understand this position and meditate upon him in that svarup, that true feature, true form, true ontological source of his svarup identity. In English, he's described to be like the pupil of the eye or of Shrimati Radhika. That means when we pray to Shirada Kripa Drishti, Kripa Kataksha Bhajanam. Krishna himself prays to Sri Radha, please set, look upon me out of your mercy. The Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada, he is that glance of the amazing grace of Srimati Radhika in this world. The more we try to really enter into this line, the more serious we become. That's why I'm trying to give you an understanding of how serious this is because we waste life after life after life after life after millions of lives after millions of lives and now we have this opportunity and yet we waste it why because we're not serious so i was very fortunate to live in a monastery ashram in india for 16 years under the guidance of my teacher who i can say i was very fortunate to see the living example of a saint and serve under their guidance and continue to pray to always be under their guidance if you see their life you see what it means to be in spiritual life spiritual life is not a game why freeing yourself from illusion and becoming liberated is not a joke or a game it's something that you have to be extremely serious about it's described wake up this is the start of the Upanishads. So now we're going to discuss the Upanishads. Wake up. Uttishtata Jagrata. Rise up. Wake up. When someone's pretending to be asleep, how do you wake them up? So most of us are pretending to be asleep. Because here we are as devotees. Right? Or out there in the world, people. But pretending to be asleep means we're not fully Krishna conscious yet. Being asleep means we don't know about Krishna. We don't know about God and our soul and we're lost and we're in illusion and we're just, we, we're lost. But here we are with all opportunity. So we should not be asleep or pretending to be asleep. Wake up! 
Hargreaves would say, it's easier to wake up a sleeping person than someone pretending to be sleeping. How do you wake up someone pretending to be sleeping? Cold water. <laughs> Very cold. There's some ice down their back. Okay, so if you're serious about spiritual life, it's very easy. If you're not serious, it's like being in school. One plus one is two. Two plus two is four. Three plus three is six. Three times three, eight times eight. All education means you learn something simple and then you learn a little something extra and then associate it with something you learned before and then a little extra and you build upon it, build upon it, build upon it. Arguably, they would say there are different courses of study for different levels of practitioners. Kanishta, neophytes, maddim, intermediate levels, and advanced level. All these courses of study, according to your advancement, you can realize and understand more. So how are you going to understand imaginary numbers if you don't understand arithmetic, subtraction, multiplication, division? How are you going to understand geometry, trigonometry if you don't understand geometry? How are you going to become post-graduated if you never graduated? So unless you're serious about your spiritual life, you'll never graduate. Graduate, then there's no question of postgraduate study. So I, just to let you know about myself, it's my responsibility here to also offer postgraduate degrees in spiritual life. What does that mean? I've been given the specific mandate to teach about Shimati Radhika in Vrindavan and Sri Krishna and the intimate intricacies of their loving affairs and how to enter into their loving affairs and serve them. I said before, how to meditate on God 24 hours a day. How are you going to get to that stage if you can't stand up on your own two feet and learn to chant and pray and be there at Arati and come to programs and to Kirtan? If you can't learn that much, how are you going to be engaged in Astakali Lila Smaran? The day for, daily Eightfold daily pastimes of Radhakrishna and serve therein. Really, you're only qualified to meditate on it when you're qualified to approach it in your own sadhaka, aspirational, and siddha form. And that's the wealth of Chaitanya Charitamrita, our line, Mahaprabhu. That's what's being offered by our Goswamis. Enter that realm of divine loving engagement. That is what our gurus are always absorbed in. No matter what they teach, that is their absorption in our line. So I'm just going to quote this first verse. We're going to start this series of Ishupanishad study. Why? Because in Vrindavan, our root, Mool Mat, which means the root of our mission, our Vaishnava Charis expressed the desire to speak about the Upanishads and also about the life of our Guru. So in San Francisco, I'm going to be going for one week there and we'll speak about our Sri Guru, Sri Gurudev, his darshan. And also we'll continue this study for our university with our students present and also those who are watching or listening. Any questions you may have, you can please send them in. And ask, inquire. We'll have our students who are also like student teachers can discuss with you. They also have weekly Zooms where you can discuss with them and become approach spiritual life more seriously. So my responsibility here and where I travel is to offer courses of study for every level of practitioner who is a sadhaka. I'm not teaching siddhas. I'm praying to them and meditating on them and praying to serve their desire, to be like their small, insignificant part and parcel, but sharing their mood and their desire. So therefore, I do mentorship for advanced devotees or aspiring to be advanced. That means there are the books of the Goswamis which describe the pastimes of Sri Radha Krishna and how can we enter within them. So it's my responsibility being given to me to discuss these things, but this is not so much for public. Because if you put it all in the public, then people who are not qualified will enter within that. So this is a course of study that I'll do with Zoom for those who become more serious about their spiritual life. And generally speaking, it should be for those who've been chanting the Maha Mantra for 15 years or at least 10 years. But it's not about time. It's about seriousness. So maybe it's in one year you can do 10 years worth of serious study. Why in university, some very smart kids, not just smart, but studious, right? 
They can pass through a few years of study in a year. So maybe it's five years, maybe it's six years. But this is not for public. This is for advancing students. And then for beginners, we're going to be doing a podcast. We'll release the podcast three times a week. Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Sunday is Shrimati Radhika's day. Tuesday is Sevak's day. Why Tuesday is also the day of Hanuman. And so Tuesday is for Sevaks. Hanuman is the best servitor of the Lord, Lord Ram. It means to put your life in your hands in service. That's Hanuman. So we release our podcast on Tuesdays and it calls out to our courage. On Sundays, it calls out to our love and kindness, why Shrimati Radhika, and also this power of love. And on Thursday, to Guru, the teacher. This is called Guruvar in Hindi. Guru's day, Guruvar, Thursday. So these three days of the week, we'll release a podcast for beginners on the path of spiritual life. This is not a podcast for religious practitioners. It's a podcast for spiritual aspirants who may be part of any religion. It's a non-sectarian platform for teaching the values of spiritual life, how to advance in spiritual life. You may or may not be a follower of my faith, but it's possible that you can gain some understanding or perhaps some insight that can help you on your path. Whether you're a Christian or any kind of Hindu or Buddhist. It's good to have varied education. So this is not, like I said, this is not a podcast for those who are religious per se, although many people who are religious will listen. But it's a podcast for those who are spiritual and who may or may not have lost some faith in religious dogmatic practice. And it's for helping you develop from whatever level you're at to whatever your highest potential is in relationship with God and loving God. So that's why we say it's on the path. For seekers on the path to life, truth, and love. What does it mean to really have life, the life of the soul? What does it really mean to be abiding in truth, real truth, not relative, temporary truth, absolute truth, your relationship with God and the absolute plane of existence, transcendental life and ultimate love. What is your ultimate love? So we serve that Satchirananda. Sat means existence. Chit means consciousness. Ananda means bliss. So how can we live in life and truth, life, existence, truth, pure consciousness, and ananda, bliss or love. So we're going towards that direction. So this is our podcast is for beginners in the path, those who aren't following. It's not, not for those who are following this religion or any religion. It's for anyone who is inclined towards spiritual life, who believes in something greater than themselves or everything they can see, who believes in consciousness, if you believe in consciousness, then this podcast is for you. If you think consciousness is just a product of matter and you're just a dead, inert automaton living out your cycle of life until you disappear from existence forever, then you can also hear if you want to hear about something else. But it's for those who believe in consciousness. If you believe in consciousness, then you're a spiritualist. So this is a spiritualist podcast. For seekers on the path to real life, truth, and love. And we're trying to embody this with kindness, courage, and wisdom. This is all very important. Kindness, the mood of Shiradha, courage, the mood of our Sevaks in our line, and wisdom, the wisdom of our teachers. And so we'll go through this course, and then we also offer these university classes, which I'll be doing daily with my students. Daily, we'll be learning and reading from our sacred scriptures. And the podcast will also tell stories from our scriptures, but it's more adjusted to a narrative flow that can come along with you, that you can develop with. Because I may be giving a course that's higher than your present level, but it's also very relevant. 
but the podcast for beginners, not beginners necessarily, but I'm saying not for people specifically following my faith, which I practice. So no one's a beginner. We're all old souls. So forgive me if it sounds like, oh, you're a be No, whatever level you're at in spiritual life, but it's a non-sectarian, means for all spiritual seekers. I'll say one thing about non-sectarianism. A lot of times when someone says non-sectarianism, you should understand it's a red flag. Why? They just want you to join their cult. And they want to make a little bit of bigger circle. Right? Oh, you're part of this? No, really, you're part of this, but it's my thing. So real non-sectarianism means you don't want to convert or control anyone. You want to help them, perhaps give them something helpful. But truly non-sectarianism means you're not trying to control anyone. A lot of people are trying to control others. So they say, I'm non-sectarian. But it really means what you're following is not right. Follow me and my belief system. Right? You're part of this little Vaishnav group, this family of Vaishnavs. But you're, you should actually understand you're part of this family of Vaishnavs. Why? Join my group. Or they say, no, no, why are you in this line, this group? No, no, you should be part of this bigger group. And so non-sectarianism, this is a tangent, but really it means it's the work of the Antichrist. It's very controversial. In the revelations of the Bible, it says the Antichrist comes wearing the symbols of every religion. And he teaches, I am all religions in one, worship me. That is my sect, worship me. And so what we teach in spiritual life is find a spiritual family, follow your spiritual path. That's sectarianism, but not mundane, pure sectarianism. Our Srila Bhama Goswami Maharaj, another one of our line, like Guru said, we should be pure sectarianists. Jede se nitai nai, se de se najabo. Nitai vimuke jar, muka nahi rebo. I will not look at the face of someone who is against my family, my Guru. Radha paksha chadi, je jan se jan, je bave se bave take, amito radika paksha patisada, kabu nahi heritaki. I will not look at someone, even they may be very exalted, but if they're against my Radharani, I will not look at their face. So this is pure sectarianism, but I'm saying this is a non-sectarian platform podcast. That means shiksha or teaching, like in a university, anyone can come and take lessons from a school. They don't have to become a faculty member or a disciple of that school. There's an opportunity to come more in depth. So really our university is for students who are more serious and who actually are inspired to follow the path of bhakti as saying, oh, I'm a bhakta, I'm a devotee, I want to join your mission. I want to be part of what you do. I want to be part of the family. So of course, welcome. Be part of our pure sectarian movement. We are followers of Shmati Radharani and we are proud to say it. Radhika Dasi Jadi Hoya Biman Shigrai Milaita Vagokulakan. If you have this, oh, I am Shmati Radhika's follower, then very quickly Krishna will come to you. So for those who want to follow like that, then we have our university and they can study how to become a devotee and advance in the different stages of devotion or life. And then for those who just want to share why also on our podcast, you can ask questions. You can try to learn how to be a better Christian or Buddhist or whatever faith you follow. Or if you don't follow any faith, if you just believe in something, but you don't follow any particular religion, we're not teaching you to follow religion. We're teaching you to transcend religion Go to the goal of religion, which is relationship with God and love. So one thing our Gurudev said, he said, bhakti means unity, coming together. And he gave this symbol of folded hands. He said, this is a universal symbol of prayer. This is the symbol of bhakti yoga. Yoga means union or connection and through devotion or love. So who can practice devotion for God? Is it only Christians or Muslims or Hindus or Sikhs or Buddhists? Do they have to be a Buddhist or a Hindu or a Sikh or a Christian? Can they just be a person? A soul? Is our soul branded? You are a Hindu soul, you are a Christian soul, you are a Muslim soul, you are a Jewish soul, or you are a soul and there is God. So that's non-sectarianism. Not trying to convert, but sharing. And then if you want to follow more seriously, that's also available because spiritual life is all opportunity, no control, no obligation. So the first verse of Ishupanishad, I'm just going to give a very, very brief teaser. 
Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate God is complete. So we're going to talk about this in San Francisco. I'm going for one week for a series of lectures in San Francisco and then to Hawaii. There are many angles of this understanding. What I'm going to touch upon here as a teaser is something our Srila Gurudev said a thousand times at least in his public lectures in the West and in India and over the course of his life, thousands and thousands of times he stated this. He said, there's something within you some dormant love of God that needs to be awakened. He said, your swarup, something is there inherent in your nature. Everything is within the seed, the whole tree, the whole makeup of the tree, how many branches, how many leaves, the color, the flowers, the fruits, the taste. One mango tree, the mangoes will taste a little different from the. If you can de develop enough subtle understanding of an essence, you can say, oh, do you taste the mango from that tree over there? Try the mango from that tree. So every soul is unique. Every soul has a nature. And our process is a process of discovery of that nature and awakening of that nature. There's, within the seed, there's your relationship with God. Within the seed, there's your eternal relationship with the associate of God that will give you entrance into his divine realm through mercy. Ultimately, our path is the path of mercy. To enter the association of Shimati Radhika as her, assistance and her servitors and her love for Krishna, mercy is required. Grace, amazing grace is required and your loving effort is required. Therefore, you have to become courageous, receive this wisdom, follow this path. Om Purnamada Purnam. Everything is complete. Your soul is complete. Om Purnam. Your soul is complete. It's in a seed-like state, which is called the Jadavasta, covered consciousness, acquired nature, thinking you're this man or woman in this body and material existence. But you are not that, you're a soul. What is the nature of your soul? We say you are not this body, then what are you? So we're here to help you learn. Who are you? What are you? What is your nature? So our Guru David would say, that is perfect. That is Purna. Just yesterday, I was every month we publish one of his volumes of his lectures that we transcribe with our team. Why? Because of our love. We're not doing it to get respect and honor and appreciation for anyone. We love him. Therefore, we hear him and we serve his words and we preserve his words. So every month we present a volume of his teachings. Uh, currently, we're on volume, we've done 43. And just yesterday, our, our student monk here finished the 44th volume. Why? It's another series called Guruvani. It's Hindi to English lectures. But all together, we're on that third volume now of our net, uh, series of all his lectures in India. And why? Because we love him. And from that, we'll find all the essential teachings and present them one after another. And this, is our, this is our divine ship that can carry us to God. The service of the words of Sri Guru. Guru Mukha Padma Vakya Chite Te Kuriya Aikya Arna Kuriya Mani Ash We have no aspiration but to serve the words of our divine teachers. Guru Mukha Padma Vakya Guru Mukha What is my Gurudev's conception that he is giving from this entire Parampara lineage? I will serve that. So our Gurudev said Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya God is complete. Everything that comes from God is complete. That means the souls that are expansions, parts and parcels of God they are also complete. That means you are complete. But that complete seed-like state how can it reach its full potentiality? Therefore we have our course of study and our sadhana and our practice. How you can realize your potentiality not something that is only bestowed but something that is bestowed, why mercy is required to enter Radha Dasyam. This is why it's bestowed. This is why there's an age-old argument between is it bestowed or is it inherent? Your love and relation with God is inherent, your nature that will be completed, but without the mercy of someone who's in that divine realm, associate of that divine realm, you cannot fully enter into that realm. You can go very high and very close, but to fully enter, you need a ray of bhav. That means... The love coming from the heart of the associate of Krishna, from the associate of Shmati Radhika, 
illuminates your heart and then reveals your swarup and your identity and your relationship and then you go there. So mercy, bestowal is necessary and sadhan, your effort to develop is necessary but without mercy, nothing is possible. So even though your swarup is there without mercy, it's never possible to realize it. So this is our brief introduction. God is complete. The soul is complete. A seed is complete. The complete blueprint of the tree is in the seed. So if you are a soul, that means you have a constitutional nature. And the blueprints of your swarup, identity, is within that. That is our philosophy. Hare Krishna.